In our last section of naming, we are going to learn how to name covalent compounds. Now, if you remember from your study of covalent compounds, covalent compounds are made up of two or more nonmetals. Two or more nonmetals. And covalent compounds involve the sharing of electrons. And finally, in covalent compounds, we do not reduce to the lowest whole number ratio. Now, naming covalent compounds is very easy compared to some of the other lessons we've had. However, the hard part is when you throw it all together, not jumbling them all. So let's learn the easy part. Let's learn how to name the covalent compounds. And then we'll mix them in with ionic compounds. We'll learn how to name them all together. Now, first of all, covalent compounds uses a system of prefixes to tell you how many of each atom is present. And here's the prefixes, mono, di, tri, tetra, if you've played Tetris, penta, the pentagon, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. And you probably recognize all of these prefixes except for maybe hepta, maybe nana. So there's a pattern for naming covalent compounds. In the pattern for naming, you name how many are of an atom, that's your prefix, with the first element, followed by how many of the second one, prefix, and then you end in IDE. For example, N2O5. N2, the 2 is di, the 5 is pent, so it's going to be di nitrogen pent and instead of saying oxygen you give it an ide ending di nitrogen pent oxide okay what about this one p4o10 now notice they did not reduce this down to p2o5 because it actually exists as four phosphoruses and 10 oxygen so we can't reduce it down it doesn't exist as 2 and 5. It exists as 4 and 10. All right, so the 4 is tetra. The 10 is dec or deca. You get an IDE ending. Tetra what? Tetra phosphorus. Spell out the first word, the first element. And then oxygen, you're not going to say deca oxygen. You're going to say dec oxide. Dec oxide. You're not going to say decoxide, you're just going to say decoxide. And with practice, these names become very, very easy to use. Here's a few exceptions. If you start with mono, if you start with one, you drop it from the first element. In other words, the first element never wants mono, okay? So this is carbon, that too should be a subscript, this is carbon dioxide. You wouldn't call it monocarbon dioxide because you don't ever start with mono, who wants to get mono? The second exception is that you're never going to put an A or an O before oxygen. So it's going to be monoxide, not monoxide, and it's going to be tetroxide, not tetraoxide. So what I do is I just kind of say it in my head and I use the one that sounds less awkward. Okay, tetroxide sounds better than tetraoxide. Monoxide sounds way better than monoxide. So we're going to just jump right in with our prefixes and we're going to practice. Okay, sulfur tetrachloride. So it's going to be sulfur and then chlorine with a four. Sulfur tetrachloride. You don't have to balance charges. You don't have to reduce down to the lowest whole number. These are covalent compounds. There are no ions formed because the elements are sharing electrons. How about this one? Dinitrogen, so nitrogen trioxide. How about this one? Carbon dioxide. Notice they don't call this monocarbon because you never start with mono. How about this one? Hexaboron. Silicide, oh, S-I, not S, hexaboron silicon. How about this one? Phosphorus trichloride. Okay, now we're going to name these ones. N2O5, so it's going to be di 
nitrogen, pent oxide. We're not going to say penta oxide. Uh, I suspect if you did, your teacher might still mark it correct because it's just a small error, but um, knock off that A, pentoxide. IF5, iodine, penta fluoride, okay, P4O10, tetra phosphorus. And then I've got 10 oxygens, dec, deca oxide or dec oxide? Oh, dec oxide. How about CCL4? C is carbon. We're not going to call it monocarbon because we never start with monochloride, and there's four of them, so monodide, tri, tetra. Carbon tetrachloride. That's this carbon with four chlorides around it. Carbon tetrachloride. If you've done dot notation so much fun, guys. And SEF6, so selenium hexa fluoride. And I know right now you're thinking, oh my goodness, naming covalent compounds and writing them is so easy. It really, really is. So what happens when we mix it up with ionic naming? Well, this is what you do. The trick is to decide ahead of time if it's ionic or covalent. I would pick out all the covalent compounds first, name those because they're the only ones that get prefixes. You don't have to worry about charges. They're the easiest, so you just got to find them. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at 10 10 compounds, sorry, and I want you to put a C for covalent next to every one that. All right, instead of putting a C by my covalent compounds, I went ahead and highlighted them in blue. How do you know they're covalent? You're looking covalent. You're looking for anything that's two or more nonmetals, or you're just looking something for something that doesn't have a metal in it. And none of these have metals in them, so we're going to go through and name them very quickly. And this is going to be diphosphorus pentoxide. This is going to be sulfur dioxide. We've already written this one twice, carbon tetrachloride. We've written this one twice, carbon dioxide. This one's going to, this one's going to be tetraphosphorus pentasulfide. And this one's going to be nitrogen trifluoride. Okay. Okay. So those are my covalent ones. Everything else is ionic. So let's go through and I'm going to pause the video and you name the ionic ones and then we'll go over them together. Okay. Now finding the covalent ones here was very easy because I just looked for anything that had prefixes in it. Okay, uh, I didn't even look for non-metals, which is what I should have done. I just went through and found everything with prefixes in it. And that's how I knew that it was um, covalent. So now let's, gonna, let's go through and name these. Antimony, what is antimony? SB, tribromide, boom. Hexaboron, B6, silicide, SI, iodine, penta, fluoride, dinitrogen, trioxide, phosphorus, triiodide. Look how triiodide has an IIO. Now that looks funky, but it's correct because you say triiodide. So go ahead and put all three vowels in a row. It's kind of fun looking. All right. So man, putting those covalent compounds together was very easy. Now I'm going to pause. I want you to pause and try and write the answers for these remaining ionic compounds. And we've got everything thrown in here. Pause the video and try. Okay, let's look at number 14. This is actually a base. Calcium is plus two. Hydroxide is OH minus one. I'm gonna do the switcheroo thing. A one there and a two there. 
Ca1OH2, two of this whole thing. Get rid of the one. There we go, calcium hydroxide. Potassium carbonate. Carbonate is CO3, two minus. Potassium is K plus. I'm gonna do the whole switcheroo thing, put a two there and a one there. So this is gonna be K2CO3, one. I only need one of them, so I just leave it, okay? How about this one, number 17, copper two. Oh, that's two means that copper has a plus two charge because it's multivalent, SO4, two minus is sulfate, okay? Those just put together. Now, be careful, if you get in the habit of doing the switcheroo thing, you're gonna do Cu2SO42, and you have a two and a two, you gotta reduce it down. So be very, very careful of that, okay? So it's just gonna be CuSO4, because the charges balance out. Silver one, now silver is not multivalent, but it doesn't have, according to its group, a plus one, so sometimes they write silver one, or you can just remember that silver has a plus one charge, nitrate, NO3 minus, so this is already balanced out, AgNO3, and oh, I forgot a covalent, chlorine dioxide. Very easy to spot, how did I miss it? There was the dye telling me right there. Okay, so now you folks, you've been naming everything. You've learned all the possible ways to name. The only thing we didn't practice in here was a couple acids, but that is everything thrown together aside from the acid. Congratulations. If some of this still doesn't make sense to you, go back and rewatch the videos because the more you practice, the easier it will get and pretty soon it will become second nature. I promise you.